we're particularly interested in why, why some students, often quite gifted students, very able students, still get stuck with certain aspects of their learning. For example, say, com computer science students. There's maybe 10% of them in any class who just don't get object-oriented programming. You know, they, they don't get it. And it's trying to help both the students and their professors to kind of help them get out of that stuck space. Um, but, you know, what ways do we have of talking about that kind of conceptual stuckness? Um, how might we get a better understanding on it, which in pedagogical terms might help us to redesign our teaching so that more students uh, can get through these challenging uh, conceptual uh, encounters that, that all courses in higher education in involve. So it's about trying to get students out of stuck places um, and trying to help staff to help them in that process. It's another lens, well, we, we feel it's a useful lens, an additional lens uh, on student learning in, the, in that sense, in that um, our view is that uh, you know, there, there's no one-size-fits-all way of understanding what learning is about. You need to look at it from a range of lenses, but each lens, in a way, magnifies something and uh, distorts at the same time, or it foregrounds something and it pushes other things into the background. So if you looked at learning, say, through gender theory, OK, particular things will become salient, other things less salient. Um, we feel threshold concepts um, brings new things into view or, or particular things into view, and that it's a, it's a helpful uh, additional tool in your collection of lenses or whatever metaphor, your, you know, your, your toolkit, as you were, your armoury. Um, so it, it's a new lens on student learning and perhaps throws light on why students may experience difficulty, why they may get stuck, what, what the nature of the troublesomeness might be. Uh, the second thing related to that is uh, we feel the framework, because of that light on student learning, may inform curriculum design, course design. Okay, So if this is where students are getting stuck, or this is maybe why they're getting stuck, then maybe we need to come at this differently. Or as um, our colleague David Perkins at Harvard, who uh, talks about troublesome knowledge, he always says, if students are not getting it one way, change the mode, you know. Probably most students won't get it one way, they need another way. So when you're designing a program, you know, what, what modes of access are there to this learning? And is there just one? Well, maybe you need other modes in there, okay? Maybe you've had lectures. Maybe these students need a field trip. Maybe they need some time in the labs. Maybe they need to do some student group work, and, yeah, and so on. Maybe they need to do some private reading, whatever. Um, but, you know, the sequencing of their learning, the kinds of experiences you're designing in, um, we feel that the thresholds framework can inform that process, you know. It, it, by getting us to think about troublesomeness, about these transformational points, about conceptual difficulty, we feel that may affect the way you want to reconsider uh, your program. And I suppose the third, the third way we see the framework as um, having an influence on higher education is that it can be used as a as, as a research tool as well. It can be used as a uh, as an analytic framework to um, look at. Uh, avenues of inquiry, issues that need investigating in relationship to uh, the scholarship of teaching and learning in, in that sense. It's, it's, um, it's a different approach, it's a different perspective, it's uh, by no means the only one as we know but it's again it's an, it's an additional research tool as well as an additional curriculum design tool I think in that sense. So we'd say it has, has those, uh, those, those three main functions I would think, yeah.